episode of the Good Graham Show for 2019. Yes, I'm back. Um, yeah, it's Christmas and all that business as well and truly really, uh, in the bin, as they say. And um, I hope you all had a, a really good Christmas and New Year and uh, had lots of uh, interesting grams. Um, wish I could say that I tasted some interesting grams over Christmas, but some kind soul decided he was going to give me the flu. Um, yes, uh, I spent most of Christmas... Um, well, the only thing I was having over Christmas was uh, was cold remedies, shall we say? And um, anyway, we won't really go into uh, into any more detail other than that. So uh, I hope you had a, a really good Christmas, and um, I'm, I'm actually still kind of battling the, the tail end of this 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 flu, in actual fact. So um, I thought probably best not to do one of those kind of light, delicate space side episodes of the show. Um, let's do something with a bit of um, uh, phenolic intensity, shall we say, that, you know, anyone, even if you've got you know, two blocked nostrils, are still going to smell, shall we say. So, um, and well, yes, and I kind of wanted to do this episode of the show anyway, so uh, uh, there's nothing like starting the uh, the, the new year with, a, with an epic peat marathon which is what we're doing as you can see from the uh, uh, the title page we're looking at um, uh, three bottlings of Port Charlotte and three bottlings of uh, Octomore and before we kick off I'd just like to say a very big thank you to Brooklady and to the owners Remy Contro for most of the samples for today's episode of the show and um, although Remy Contro are you know a, a big company um, slightly disorganised it has to be said but I can't fault their generosity in certainly in sending samples when I asked for samples and they, they sent me full bottles and I'm going okay you can carry on sending me samples if you like um, so yes a really big big thank you to them for this episode of the show and hopefully um, I won't be saying anything bad about the whiskies but you know I'm not going to do that I mean you know, you know I'm a big fan of um, uh, of Port Charlotte and Optimal, so um, so yes, I'm really quite looking forward to uh, to doing this comparative tasting. I think this is going to be quite a bit of fun. Um, obviously, as you can see from the uh, the title page, the odd one out is a private bottling of Optimal uh, from the Rest and Be Thankful uh, company, which um, I snaffled a sample from the bottle that we used uh, in our year end. Uh, well, tasting in the shop which uh, um, as expected did the usual marmite people loved it people hated it which uh, but the, the interesting thing was a lot of people basically said you know they'd never tasted Optimal before they'd heard about all the the business about it and, and all the hype and what have you and although some of them still you know, didn't really particularly enjoy it they said at least it was nice to have actually finally tasted it and say well I've tasted Optimal and I can see what all the fuss is about so um so yeah, there you go. That's that's this week's episode of the show. Uh, I don't think there's a great deal else to say apart from let's have a look at today's lineup. Okay, so There's we're going to kick off first with this bottling. This is the 2011 Port Charlotte Isle of Barley. It is six years old, bottled at 50%, uh, with the barley coming from three farms on Isla and uh, hopefully I'm not going to murder the pronunciation um, Dunlossett, uh, Kilcarian and um, Sunderland well I didn't pronounce Sunderland but <laughs> didn't realise Sunderland was on Isla but there you go um, so yeah that's that's this bottling uh, believe peated to about 40 parts per million and aged in uh, American oak uh, the second bottling we'll be looking at is this one this is the Port Charlotte 10 um, again, bottled at 50%, and I'm imagining around about 40 parts per million. Uh, this, as is Brookladdies, often want a combination of various casks. 65% uh, first fill American whiskey, 10% uh, second fill American whiskey, and 25% second fill French red wine. So, it could be interesting. Always liked a bit of a bit of wine and peat. I think they make um, interesting bedfellows, shall we say? And I can still remember that uh, Long Row Barolo, which was one hell of a car crash of a malt, but just one of those things that sort of, you know, morbidly interesting, I suppose. Um, and then we're going to be looking at this particular bottling. This is called the 
MRC01. It's seven years old, uh, bottle of 59.2%, and I believe the first time the distillery has made a mass release of um, red wine finished Port Charlotte. Although, isn't there some red wine in the, um, the tank? let them get away with that one shall we um so yeah this has uh, basically been aged 50 uh, percent in uh first film american oak 50 percent in uh second fill french red wine um both of them been vatted together and given a final year's uh, finishing or acing or whatever they call it these days um in uh, ex left bank uh red bordeaux casks so um could be interesting um and that makes up the three uh, bottlings of uh, Port Charlotte that we've been looking at. So, time to then ramp up the peat levels. And uh, the second, the first of the three optimals we'll be looking at is this one. Um, no, it's this one. Uh, this is the Optimal uh, 9.1. Uh, it's a five-year-old. It's peated to 156 parts per million, which isn't the most heaviest peated of Optimals that I've actually tasted, but it's pretty much getting there. Uh, bottled at 59.1% and um, it's aged in 100% American oak. Uh, interestingly enough, they do give you the, the breakdown of where that American oak actually came from, which is quite interesting. So 51% uh, of the cast came from Jim Beam, 29% came from Jack Daniels, 15% uh, from Clermont and 8% from uh, Old Grandad. Um, so could be quite interesting, should hopefully get lots of the spirit character, shall we say. Uh, then we're going to look at, like I said, the only independent bottling. This is the Reston B Thankful Whiskey Company's Optimal. Uh, this was distilled in 2007, uh, bottled uh, in November of 2014, making it six years old at 63.8%, uh, and was aged in a single Saturns cask, uh, number R... Uh, what's that? Five zeros one six seven three seven. So um, I've still got stock with this. I did buy it sort of a, a number of years ago, in actual fact, and I've still got some stock of it because it's not one of those whiskies that sells massively because it's nearly two hundred pounds a bottle. But uh, I thought it would be just interesting to throw in because um, I've always liked uh, I like the balance of, of peat and, and sweetness from Saturns, and um, you know, I'm not going to say too much more. Hopefully, this will this will display uh, said balance, shall we say. And finally, we're going to look at the uh, last of the two uh, distillery bottlings of Optimal. This is the 9.3. Uh, this was peated to uh, only 133 parts per million and um, aged in a number of different cast types. It's five years old, bottled at 62.9%. 25% uh, uh, first fill bourbon, 25% third fill virgin oak. Well, therefore, it's no longer virgin oak, really, is it? But... Oh, well, we'll let them get away with that. All right, originally the cast were virgin oak, but uh, yeah, semantics, I guess. Um, uh, and 20% uh, second fill reef salt, which for those of you that don't know is a fortified red wine from the south of France, uh, fortified Grenache. 20% uh, 20, 20 casks, uh, second fill Syrah and 10% second fill Bourbon. So just sort of like, um, yeah round it all out so to speak um, so I think that should be that should be quite interesting um, interestingly enough they have named the two uh, Optimal bottlings uh, the Logos the, the oh, God, tongue um, uh, Dear Logos I believe uh, which I think is something to, which is Greek for um, starting a conversation or something of that ilk uh, and certainly Optimal has a tendency to should we say like I said start a conversation um, with regards to whether people like it or not I mean if you if you love Pete you're gonna love it if you don't love Pete you're probably never gonna love it but um, anyway I love Pete so <laughs> let's uh, let's make a start it's a pretty good job considering I'm gonna be tasting six of them um, so let's make a start with the uh, the Port Charlotte Isle of Arles. Right, okay, so let's see what uh, the nose gives us. Fresh, coastal, salty. It's got a lovely sort of, initially the peak feels quite dry, a little bit dusty. And there's a little bit of that slightly tarry peak coming through. Now, 
I mean, what I love about Port Charlotte and have done is is the, the balance. Yes, it's very heavily peated, but you can still smell um, barley. There's even a light sort of honeysuckle note, sort of you know that kind of classic honeysuckle um, note that I get with with Brocladi. A um, little bit of creosote, a little bit of tar, touch of coffee kind of coming through now. The oak sort of just sort of starting to to uh, influence the nose a little bit. I mean, a touch of vanilla as well, a little bit of, a little bit of almost um, toffee. I mean, that is just fabulously balanced. That really is absolutely delightful. And like I said, although, yes, it's quite heavily peated, it's not a monster. Um, it's just really well balanced. And um, as, as when you're playing with all sorts of, you know, characteristics certainly sort of pungent characteristics like pea that's what you want you want balance um, and this certainly has it in in spades Let's see what the nose is like the like Kicks off with loads of sweet barley, a little bit of herbal notes, a little bit of bog myrtle, then the peat starts to come in, a little bit of dry dusty peat, followed by some creosote tarry peat, um, faintly medicinal right on the finish, um, but quite robust, there's some coffee notes, there's some wood spices, um, again the balance is absolutely fabulous, and um, the only question I have, and I'll probably make up my mind by the time I've tasted the 10-year-old, is if you cast your mind back to the Springbank episode I did with the local barley, uh, it was considerably more expensive. And um, the same goes for, for the um, Brooklady, um Port Charlotte Isle of Barley. It's about 10 to £12 pounds a bottle more expensive than the 10. And... Um, I mean, initially when I looked at the pricing, I was thinking, well, you know, why would you buy this as opposed to the 10-year-old? You know, most people that are not sort of really that aficionados of, of Port Charlotte are going to look at the two and go, well, that's older. I'm gonna, that's less money. You know, it's a bit of a bit of a no-brainer. Um, and so, well, by the time, hopefully, when I get to taste the 10-year-old, we'll... I make a decision as to whether I think it's really worth it. I didn't stock it purely on the, the whole point of the, of the money aspect and, and, and the fact that I would have to continually explain why it's 10 to 12 pounds more expensive than a bottle, which I just really couldn't bother with at the end of the day. So anyway, um, as a whiskey goes, absolutely fantastic. Lovely balance. Love it. Love the peat. Love the American oak. Uh, love the balance. So, mm. French start. Okay, so let's move on to the 10 year old. Let's see if the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Not quite as fresh. Um, it certainly shows a bit more maturity. There's some obvious whiny tannin notes. Um, there's a little bit more of that sort of coffeed um, tanning uh, kind of coming through. A little bit of dried fruit. It's denser. The peat is a lot denser as well. Um, I mean, whether that's just the knock-on effect from, you know, all the different wood types. Um, still, it's got some, some tarry notes, some creosote, some brine. Treacle, herbs, you know, a little bit of almost bog myrtle kind of herbal notes. Um, Again, it's not a huge peat monster. It's 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 got plenty of peat character, um, but again, it's all pretty harmonious. I'm not getting quite so much um, distillery character. I'm not getting as much sort of barley and honeysuckle notes I did with the uh, the, the Isla barley. And maybe maybe there you go. That is the sort of <laughs> the, the reasoning for um, the the extra price. But it's mainly down to the fact that the <laughs> that's all American oak and this has got some um, uh, some wine cask which is 
just giving it a little bit more richness, a little bit more density, but uh, still absolutely stonking nose. Let's see what the palette's like. The peat is a lot more forceful, it's a lot more ooh, really gritty and smoky sort of smoke particle peat um, really sticks to the inside of the mouth. There's tar, there's prunes, there's um, dried red fruits. Um, it's not quite a car crash but it is a real sort of intense mouthful. Um, a little bit of tannin, a little bit of spiciness. Um, and considering they're both bottled at the same ABV, it tastes a little bit stronger. The, the, the alcohol is a little bit more prevalent on the finish, um, which seems to have slightly sort of ramped up those kind of spicy notes, uh, certainly from the wood. And um, the aftertaste is absolutely gorgeous. It's got that kind of dark chocolatey, peaty kind of character, uh, which I really love. And it's got a real weight and a real density to it. Um, it certainly doesn't quite have as much kind of, like I said, um, barley or um, brocladi kind of character. Um, and it's maybe not quite so sort of salty. Um, but it is definitely different. And it's, I must admit, I'm kind of quite torn as to whether, um, if they'd have been the same price, I would have gone absolutely brilliant, spot on. This is the reason why... Um, they're both on the shelves, they're just completely different to each other, but, you know, when, when one is sort of £12 pounds a bottle, it's, it's difficult. Um, and, um, but, you know, oh, I just, mm, oh, I love that, that was, that's great. Hey, you scream for help. Okay, so let's move on to the MRC. Now, this is even more bloody expensive. I mean, this is about, um, What's this about? 80, late 70s, 80 odd quid. Um, so quite considerably more expensive. Uh, but you can kind of like, again, it's that you can kind of justify that with, you know, the, the, the facts that, you know, the, the different cast types and it's all yada, 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 all that kind of stuff. But is it any good? Let's uh, stick one's nose in the glass and find out. Quite herbal, quite mentholated. Um, a lot of red wine character, um, juicy red currants, berries, touch of almost kind of um, figgy sort of notes. Um, the French oak is definitely a lot tighter and it's a lot more noticeable. Um, not quite so so kind of gritty or, or coffeeed. It's it's just a tighter kind of feel to the oak. Um, quite a lot spicier. Um, the peat is is is, all, is a lot more medicinal as well. I mean, it's kind of like I said, coming through that kind of mentholy kind of character. Um, touch of coffee, a um, little bit of dark chocolate, a bit of stewed fruit, a um, little bit of I'm getting a little bit of coconutty American oak kind of coming through it's kind of really just about there you know you have to kind of work hard but you kind of do get it and I think this is more a kind of interesting combination of the you know what the two different uh, wood types uh, bring to the equation with you know a chunk of peat and um, again I think it's fabulously balanced I love this this is certainly not a car crash by uh, any uh, means, and it's just got a, it's got a, a lovely sort of roundness, a richness, um, sweetness as well. Certainly from the um, uh, the whining red fruits, it's um, very very impressive. So what the palace like?
whew, that menthol at the finish has really kind of <laughs> woken up the senses. Um, it's wonderfully mellow. It kind of starts off very gentle in relative terms. Um, lots of kind of treacle and tar and um, tarry kind of peat, bit of leather, uh, tobacco. Um, and then the spices kick in, the alcohol kicks in, um, the menthol comes in, um, the medicinal peat, the, the, the dry tannins. Um, whoa, that is really, really complex. Um, almost a sort of salty, minty kind of finish uh, on the aftertaste with a, almost a sort of savoury kind of soy saucy, sort of umami kind of... Wow, wow, I mean, the just com complexity of this malt is just absolutely stunning. I just think that, that this combination of casks has just worked absolutely amazingly well. Um, I don't think it really needs a drop of water, even though it is kind of like a, approaching 60-odd percent, but I'm going to stick a little drop of water with it and just see what that kind of does to it. So, um, softens the intensity, it has to be said. It's... Um, I'm getting a little bit more of the American oak character now, a little bit more freshness, a little bit more even you know, touch of barley, you know. Um, that sort of slightly coconutty American oak is now sort of more to the fore, and I often find that with, with these sort of um, high proof um, wine finished and uh, wine matured whiskey, so the, the, the wine character gets kind of knocked down once you put a little bit of water with it. Um, it's a little bit oilier now, it's a little bit more. Yeah, like I said, a bit more almost barley -y character. It's got sort of more a kind of a, a kinship with the, the Isle of Barley than um, than the ten. Anyway, let's see what the pat's like now. Mellower. Doesn't quite have the spicy kick. Um, a lot more yeah, a lot more, yeah, more coffee, um, still quite mentholated, still quite herbal, lots of bog myrtle, lots of peat, um, I prefer it neat, I think, as a slight sort of, almost kind of metallic bitterness right on the, right on the finish, right on the very end when you put a little drop of water with, which isn't sort of unpleasant, um, but it does kind of jar a little bit, um, so I think with, with this one, even though it is approaching 60%, I think this is one that I would just opt to sort of drink without actually diluting it. I don't think sort of dilution does anything other than, well, you know, just sort of drop the alcohol down a little bit. I don't think, um, um, but it's just so well contained, neat. And I think that's, that's the wonderful thing about some whiskies, even though they are quite high in alcohol it's whether that alcohol is contained well within the spirit and i certainly think that um that in this case it is indeed contained rather well and it is indeed rather good okay so 156 parts per million uh this is the optimal 9.1 see what the nose gives us It reminds me of old school Kalila. It's got that lemony, fresh, crisp saltiness. Um, and it's 156 parts per million, and it doesn't smell like at all. Um, the peat is really kind of quite subdued. And there's a, dare I say it, a little bit of a faintiness, um, a little bit of soapiness. I'm not loving this nose, it has to be said. I mean, you know, I, I know Octomore is generally bottled pretty young, between sort of five and, and seven years old, and it kind of gets away with it because of its monstrous peak character. Um, but, although this is, like I said, this is peaked 156 parts per million, it doesn't come across anywhere near that kind of level, and it's kind of exposing the youthful spirit character, which is a little bit, too youthful. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not complaining about the quality. Um, there's a little bit of 
a little bit of sort of roasted coffee bean kind of coming through but it's just it's just a touch too young um, as um, a certain rock band <laughs> might have said I think um, oh no that was a touch too much wasn't it um, yeah this is just a touch a touch too young I I'm not warming to it, it has to be said, and when you're looking at comfortably three figures on the shelf, mm. anyway, let's see what the power's like. Plenty of barley. Oh, it's a bit bitter on the finish as well. Um, but it's got that, again, it's that youthful sort of rose petal character. I'm not getting huge amounts of peat. The peat is quite relatively subtle. Um, it's a little bit dusty. It's a bit sort of, again, it's a bit edgy. It's a bit kind of like, you know, not quite there kind of feeling to it. Um, Again, sort of, you know, comparisons with old school Kalila are quite apt. It's got that freshness, that lemoniness, um, that sort of lovely citric, salty, fresh character. Um, but again, it's just got a little bit of an edge to it, a little bit too young. And I'm not sort of overly convinced, it has to be said. Anyway. Going to put a little drop of water with it and see if that makes uh, any uh, any difference to it. Let's see what those gives us now. Ooh, ah, mm. peat seems to have disappeared. It's kind of sweet barley and soapiness. Um, raw cereal. Um, it really has kind of emphasised its youthfulness. It has to be said. Um, and I'm certainly getting some of that rose petally kind of character now. It's just sort of oily, faint, not not faint, mm, slightly soapy, fainty. You know, it's it's just just too young. Um, really shouldn't have been been bottled. I don't think. Or if you were going to have bottled these casks, you should have put some wine cask or maybe a sherry cask or something, um, just to kind of slightly detract from it, um, because this is just way too young. In my, my opinion. Anyway, let's see what passes like now. They're pretty much like the nose. I mean, the barley is emphasised. It's got a lovely latent sweetness to it, but the peat has just disappeared. I've got no peat. It's still slightly soapy. Um, it's young. It just really hasn't quite got the complexity um, that would warrant a three-figure price tag. Um, yes, it's good it, quality spirit, um, no doubting that whatsoever, but it's just not floating my boat, as they say. Okay, so let's move on to the rest and be thankful uh, Optimal. This is um, six years old and a single Saturn's cask, so let's see what note gives us on this. Oh yeah, that's raw Saturn's cask. Um, quite sweet, honeyed, gritty, intense, really peaty, um, really phenolic, um, briny, coffee, pulped, sort of um, apricot-y fruit, it's just sort of honey and um, tight, you know, really tight, um, gritty, I mean, you know, you, you want kind of gritty peat, it's kind of, you know, almost sticking to the sort of like the inside of one's nasal passages, it's really intense, really impressive, um, a little bit manure as well, a bit of farmyards, a bit of bit of um, cheap shit, oh, raw, raw and intense, that's what it all boils down to, this is kind of like, you know, this is what Optim Optimal should be, it should be grabbing you by the nasal hairs and going, oh, you know, um, 
it should be you know a real intense face slapping kind of stinkiness you know and uh, ah stunning I mean, yes, there's a little bit of sweetness behind that. The Saturns is giving it a bit of a honey sweetness, but whoa, oh my God, this is raw. It's incredible. Um, mm, stunning. Let's see what the palette's like. Intense, rich, honeyed, quite soft, relatively speaking. Again, quite gritty as well. It's got a lovely balance of softness and grittiness. Um, loads of tannins, loads of dried fruit, um, dried sort of apricots, um, dusty peat, a little bit of tar, um, touch of menthol. Again, quite quite raw and intense and alcoholic on the finish, but. Oh, spices and uh, it's just an intense mouthful it is just really incredible um, touch of pepper um, loads of salt gritty peat oh, just, oh unbelievable really very very impressive um, and I mean I, I fell in love with this when I first first tasted it and bought far too much of it shall we say which is why I've still got uh, a few bottles of it shall we say um, but oh, let's see what that gives us now with a little drop of water still quite honey more coffee now um, oilier really intensity from the Saturn's cask and I mean raw intensity it's almost like sort of sticking your nose into the cask and sort of this is just what it smells like you know it's like a little bit more cereal kind of coming through now there's a little edginess a little bit of rose petal marb but it's all really well contained it's not like um, the 9.1 where all that youthful spirit character is just kind of almost laid bare it's it's young but <laughs> stinky <laughs> absolutely wonderful let's see what the palace like now Sweeter, more honeyed, a little softer, but still got that grittiness, that gritty peat character, that intensity. Um, touch of violets is actually sort of morphing into a sort of like a, a, a heavily peated kind of oldish ish kind of bomori sort of violetiness. Um, but then you get the sort of like the youthful kind of spirit character, and you get the, the, the honeyed cask. It's just, Oh my god, this is just a real intense, complex mouthful and it's mouth watering even with water and it's alcoholic and it's stinky and it's peaty and it's oh my god, it's incredible. Um it is a whiskey that you will never forget, that's all I can say. And um that is high praise, I think. <laughs> Right, and finally, let's move on to the 9.3. Um, hopefully, I'm going to do this justice considering my, my palate feels like it's been well and truly hammered. Um, anyway, let's see what the nose gives us on this, shall we? Again, young, youthful, but I'm getting sort of lots of sort of dried red fruits. Um, more peat, it smells, even though it's only 133 parts per million, it smells more peaty. Um, it's more kind of um, together, should we say. It's it's a lot more sort of um, integrated. Um, there's a touch of sort of fortified red fruits. There's bog myrtle, there's mint, there's um, salt medicinal peat there's dry peat not not quite stinky and 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 farmyardy as as say the um the rest of me thankful um and it has maybe 
a little bit more of a fresher sort of edge to it. Um, but that is really impressive. I mean, again, the, the wine casks are not sort of overwhelming. I'm, I'm still still getting a smidge of sweet barley just underneath all of that peat. And, and this is what I love about Octomore. Yes, it is all about the complexity of the, of, of the peat, and you could almost argue it is very much a terroir driven kind of whiskey because you get all the different peat elements. Um, you get the tarry peat, you get the slightly sort of um, more kind of um, decomposing sort of uh, seaweedy sort of peat, and you get the dry peat. And it is just sort of incredible, it really is. But um, intensity is way way off the scale i mean like i said i mean you you if, if you tasted this next to the 9.1 you would have thought that this was more heavily peated it has got so much more intensity anyway let's see what it passes like really soft considering it's, it's what um, almost 63% although <laughs> you can feel the alcohol on the finish um, again sort of really really complex lots of peat lots of herbal peat medicinal peat touch of tarry peat um, spices chocolate um, but again I'm getting almost a little bit of barley I'm, I'm getting an, a little bit of, 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 of kind of sweetness uh, the red fruit is there as well, um, but that's all kind of quite sat in the background. There's a little bit of, of um, toffee, coffee, um, chewy, really chewy, quite malty on the finish, quite sort of full and sort of, you know, it's like kind of um, almost licorice sort of chewy, tarry, tobacco y, leathery. Whoa my god that's good i mean that is a real mouthful that's a real intensity um i mean you know the, the octomore is just a whiskey you would once you taste you will never ever ever forget it i mean it is one of those kind of uh, and the word legendary gets used sort of like quite offhand shall we say but i think sort of as a spirit optimal is 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 legendary i mean there is there is nothing quite like it i mean it is just mind-blowing absolutely mind-blowing that you know that you can peat something you can peat a whiskey to this kind of level and it is not just a complete and utter bloody one-dimensional mess i mean and i've tasted peated whiskies that are a lot less peated um and that's pretty much it you know um there's magic going on in uh, in the stills in brooklady that's all i can say anyway um so yeah a bit sweeter with 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 water there's a little bit more sort of whiny notes um a little bit more toffee as well again the peat is just still there it's just still huge and um herbal and 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 mentholated so it parts like that. Again, quite violety, dusty peat. It's lighter now, certainly on the finish. Not quite so heavy, not quite so intense. Um, again, it's got that sort of you know, salty, crisp, citric, fresh kind of, uh, of character. A little bit of lemon, um, dry peat, dusty sort of embers, uh, burnt embers, spice. Oh, great finish. Okay, so uh, let's sum the, today's episode of the show up. Well, um... Wow, <laughs> stunning. Uh, I mean, you know, um, I love the 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 the, the, Isle, the Isle of Port Charlotte. I mean, yes, very pure, 
lots of American Oak, apologies for rushing, but I'm running out of time. Um, and yeah, okay, you can see the difference between that and the 10 year old. There's a distinct difference of character. Um, whether this is really worth £12 or a bottle more is, of course, open to debate. The MCR, or MRC, I should say, well, I can think MCR. MRC bottling, uh, really intense. I love it. I love the combination of the peat and lots of uh, lots of winey fruit. Really great fun. Absolutely great. Um, the Optimal 9.1. The disappointing one, I think, in, in the tasting. And, you know, um, I... My devotion to Brooklady is not blind, as you well know, and I can be critical of, 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 of stuff, and probably more so critical of stuff that I love than critic, than stuff that I'm ambivalent about, but wouldn't have bottled that. Um, the uh, Rest and Be Thankful Saturns are oh, just rawness, raw, 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 intense, great fun. Um, and uh, the 9.3, well, yes, I had to buy some of that because that is just intense. I mean, you know, even though it's 133 parts per million, it punches peat wise way, way above that. I mean, it is it, mm, just stunning, absolutely stunning. So that's this week's episode of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, comments on a postcard, as they say. Uh, but, I, you know, if you've never tasted Optimal, you've never tasted Port Charlotte, and I can't imagine there's that many people of you out there that haven't, uh, give it a go. It's great fun. So, um, until next week, and hopefully the remnants of this cold will have well and truly disappeared. Good afternoon and good running.